So I must admit that sometimes even I'm surprised by how right I am. <laughs> That's quite a way to start a video, isn't it? So I think it was, what, four days ago, five days ago, something like that. I did a quick segment where I walked you through, hey, this is going to be the strategy against Bernie Sanders and the left going into 2020. And I laid out, check out that video, by the way, because I laid it out uh, in great detail using examples, uh, a couple tweets and a couple articles that just, I mean, really just map it out for you if you're paying attention that, hey, these are the lines of attack that are going to be used. So prepare yourself. And there's a reason I did that video, because I told you in advance what the strategy was going to be. And now we're going to see what we're going to watch it unfold together. So you're going to have to look at it and, and cock your head to the side a little bit and raise an eyebrow and go, well, hold on now. Kyle told me this was going to happen, and now it's happening. So what does that mean? Well, what it means is it's a coordinated strategy. That's what it means. What it means is, it, it is it's an actual effort. There's an effort being made to sniff out the things that they want to report on and the narrative they want to create and then run with that narrative. So that's why I did that video, So because I told you in advance. So now you know, when the segment I'm about to do, there can be no, Oh, goodness gracious, how dare you respond in this manner. No, I told you in advance this was going to happen because I knew it was going to happen because this is the coordinated strategy of attack against Bernie Sanders and the left. Okay, now, so what am I talking about? Well, one of the prongs of the, the strategy against Bernie and the left was the cynical weaponization of identity politics. And look at what we just got yesterday. This is from the New York Times. Women who worked for the Bernie Sanders campaign in 2016 say complaints of sexism and mistreatment were not addressed. And here's where they, they, they show their hand too much and they didn't realize it. They overreached here because the final line is it could hinder a 2020 bid. Wait, what? What? So they start with, uh, look, hey, there's this problem here. Oh, it just fell in our lap. It's not that we actively tried to sniff it out and that people are doing oppo research and that they're trying to shiv Bernie's campaign uh, in the side up front. No, it just fell in our lap. A and by the way, oh, this definitely could hinder 2020. So think about 2020 as you read this because 2020, I mean, <laughs> it's just anybody but Bernie, please. <laughs> It could hinder a 2020 bid they put in the fucking title. <laughs> Come on. Your propaganda is supposed to be subtle. It's supposed to be subtle, not in your face. Okay. Now, so I read through the article. It's pretty much what you'd expect. It's, uh, oh my goodness, there were instances of uh, sexual harassment in, in the campaign. And people feel, they feel like it, they weren't treated properly in response to that. And, uh, tisk tisk, this is a big problem. Where does the blame go? The blame obviously goes to Bernie Sanders. Uh, by the way, they also go on to talk about pay disparity. And I'm going to come back to the pay disparity thing in a second because it's just amazing that what they put in the article and then what the lines they have to drop in there as well. Okay, so, hidden in the article, where the whole implication is, ah, oh, Bernie Sanders, sexism, sexism, 2020's dead, because sexism, he's so sexist, a fucking monster this guy is. Hidden in the article, there's a line that's, quote, it is not clear whether Mr. Sanders knew of the complaints. Oh, you don't say. So in other words, there were some assholes in Bernie's campaign who potentially uh, sexually harassed people, and... Just like probably any campaign, because people are people, and some percentage of the people are going to be assholes, some percentage, if you gather together enough people, some percentage of them are going to be sexual harassers. Now, should that be dealt with? Absolutely. Absolutely that should be dealt with. But I'm pretty sure the operative fact here is they have no evidence whatsoever that Bernie Sanders knew about this. Now, let me tell you something. Let me ask you something. If Bernie Sanders heard about this, what do you think his reaction would be? Let me tell you, that person's fired. That's what his reaction would be. It would be like that. Look, we don't want that crap. Anybody who is supporting me is doing sexist things is, we don't want them. I don't want them. How do I know? Bernie Sanders is literally the most progressive senator in the country. 
That's going by the voting record. That's what that is. So he's the most progressive senator in the country, but somehow the narrative is he's obviously a sexist monster who looked the other way as there was sexual harassment going on in his campaign. I mean, who in their fucking right mind could sit there and say, I'm sure Bernie's reaction, you know, he was in a smoke-filled back room with the people surrounding him, and he goes, oh, did you say there's sexual harassment going on? Well, hear no evil, see no evil. Let them continue to do what they're doing. That's obviously ridiculous. That's beyond ridiculous. If you go read the responses to this uh, tweet that the New York Times put out, virtually everyone is like, what the fuck are you doing? This is obviously a smear job. This is obviously a hack attack against him. What are you doing? It's so obvious. It's so obvious. So, and listen, they're going to end up doing what the media did to Donald Trump in 2016. They're in the process of doing it to Bernie Sanders in 2020. So what do I mean? Well, in 2016, Donald Trump got $3 billion worth of free advertising. So the media would not stop covering Donald Trump. It was wall-to-wall -wall Donald Trump coverage. Now, you'd be correct to point out, yeah, but it wasn't positive coverage. So what do you mean? Well, it backfired on the media. Why? Because the things they chose to focus on actually helped him. It would be one thing if they were going after him about things that make sense. Like, for example, when he went on um, Fox News and he said we should kill civilians in the Middle East on purpose. Okay, that's a presidential candidate advocating for terrorism. So, yeah, you can melt down over that. You can melt down over Trump saying, oh, we should steal the oil from Iraq. There are a bunch of things where it's legitimate outrage where you could really hurt him if you cover it properly. But no, what did they focus on? They did non-scandal scandals. Like, oh my God, he curses. What? That's going to be your line of attack? I'm not kidding. That was a, the, Even other Republicans in the primary ran ads saying, oh, what about the kids? He uses foul language. There was another time where... Uh, Trump gave a rally, and he said this. TPP is so terrible, TPP is going to rape this country. They took the fact that he used the word rape, and it was like a three-day outrage fest. Ah, oh, how dare you! You're being disrespectful to the survivors of rape. So in other words, you're amplifying his message, which was, I'm against TPP. TPP is bad. You know what people thought? Oh, shit. TPP is going to outsource our jobs, so I'm glad that Trump's against it. So what? He used the wrong word. Whatever. It helped him! The media outrage helped them because you're so bad at what you do because you overreach. And that's exactly what's happening with Bernie Sanders right now. That's exactly what's happening. Everybody, is, you know, the responses were like, what? <laughs> what are you doing here? Uh, now, let me give you some more. Now, so again, quote, it is not clear whether Mr. Sanders knew of the complaints. In other words, this article shouldn't have even been written. <laughs> that, that's really what that line should say. Oh, by the way, this article shouldn't have been written because there's zero evidence Bernie Sanders knew about this. And you, use your mind for a second here. What do you think Bernie would have done if he heard, oh, you got uh, some sexual harassers in the campaign? He would have said, fire him. Fire him and then, you know, do, get some investigations going. That's what he would have done because we know Bernie. I mean, he's a self-described feminist. And the article is going to be, oh, why does he fundamentally hate women, sexist monster? Now, let me give you more. Here's what they say. Disenchanted supporters. Allegations of sexism surfaced during Mr. Sanders' campaign in 2016, when many of his male fans were derogatorily dubbed Bernie Bros for their aggressive online attacks against female reporters and supporters of Hillary Clinton. But they did not overshadow the electrifying nature of his insurgent challenge. Circumstances have changed since then. Mr. Sanders is no longer an outsider, but an established leader who will be held to a higher standard. And regarding the treatment of women, he must now grapple with the effects of the Me Too movement. So even though they admitted, listen, there's no evidence Bernie even knew about any potential sexual harassment that may have happened in his campaign. Even though they admit that, they're going on to basically say he's got to grapple with the Me Too movement. In other words, obviously what happened, and he's responsible for it, is on par with like, Harvey Weinstein or Bill Cosby. It is so hacky that I honestly, I don't even know why we're bothering to do a segment on it because this is fucking Bush League through and through. I mean, debunking this shit is like fucking just hitting a gnat off of your arm. You're going to th throw in the hashtag Me Too movement, drawing comparisons between Bernie who didn't even know about the thing you're bringing up, 
to guys like fucking Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein. Now, notice the other things they dropped in there. They talked about Bernie bros casually as if it was a fact. As if it's like, well, everybody agrees, Bernie bros, of course. The evil, you know, white male uh, Bernie Sanders supporters who are sexist monsters. So the men in the country who support the most progressive senator, literally, with the most progressive voting record, a senator who describes himself as a feminist. We are sexist. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a white male Bernie supporter. I'm, that means I'm sexist? It's not, I mean, it, it's not like it was a, a, a bad faith smear. That's exactly what it was. Guys, how do you know it's a bad faith smear? They, Hillary Clinton's team literally used the phrase, the term Obama boys against males supporting Barack Obama. So it's just that same recycled strategy. Oh my God, you oppose Hillary Clinton? Even if it's policy-based and you're super specific, I don't like the Iraq war, I don't like the Patriot Act, I don't like what she did in Libya. They still throw that at you. Why? Because they can't rebut on the policy substance, so they have to come up with a workaround, and the workaround is just a smear. They did it to Obama supporters. If you supported Obama over Hillary, you were an Obama boy. And if you dare to, oh God, if you dare to argue for why you support Obama, totally an Obama boy. And the same thing with Bernie Sanders supporters. Oh, you're, you're a male and you support Bernie uh, over Hillary Clinton. Well, obviously the, the roots of that have to be sexism. It cannot be policy. This is, I mean, it's just hacky beyond hacky. And then I don't know if you saw that other line that they slipped in there. They said, well, I mean, listen, Bernie Sanders, he's no longer an outsider. Now he's an established candidate. You see what they're trying to do? And this is what I mean by overreaching. It's so obvious. They're trying to say, okay, you know how he's got the insurgent outsider appeal because he's going to fight against the establishment and against corruption and for the people? No, he's totally not an insurgent candidate. He's totally not an outsider. I mean, he's, quote, established. So they're trying to use that word. They're using that word on purpose because it's an attempt to, for you to link in your mind Bernie Sanders with the establishment. So they're trying to flip that narrative now. And by the way, they did this in other articles already too. They went from Bernie's ideas are pie in the sky, unicorn, fairy dust, nonsense. They went from that to, oh, Bernie Sanders' ideas are now Democratic Party orthodoxy and everybody agrees to them. So obviously Bernie should step aside and let a younger person implement his ideas, which are now mainstream. You can't, you can't have those two things at the same time. You can't do that. The fuck happened there? Something fell. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it on, uh, on the mic and, and saw it on camera. Um, but come on, man. You can't. That's such an obvious contradiction. This is what I mean. They're overreaching. And then finally, they go on to accuse him of the pay disparity. I told you I'd bring that back into the conversation. Um, but deep in the article, they say this. During his campaign, Mr. Sanders earned kudos for paying his interns, a relatively unheard of practice. Okay, so that's... First of all, reflect on that. He's one of the few people to run for president and say, no, I'm going to pay people who, who work for me. I'm going to pay them. And yeah, at the time, people were like, whoa. Whoa, what's going on here? He's actually doing the right thing? That's wild. So they give the credit up front. Then they say, some former staff members said there was a little, there was a little pay transparency and employees often negotiated their own salaries. Practices that tend to favor men who often feel more comfortable requesting higher compensation packages. Uh, Ms. Davis, the former state director, said that she was originally paid about $2,400 a month as a senior staff member and saw in the campaign's uh, records that a younger man who was originally supposed to report uh, to her made $5,000 a month. She said that she brought the issue uh, to the campaign's chief operating officer who adjusted her salary to achieve parity. So, and, and let's be clear, that's deep in the article. Earlier on in the article, they talk about, ah, oh, there's allegations of pay disparity. They're paying the women less than the men. Monster. That's the, that's the complete implication and tone of the article. And then deep in the article, they go, anyway, anytime something like that happened, they immediately fixed it. And let's be clear, some people might say, oh, up, like, it shouldn't have been a problem in the first place. It shouldn't have been a problem up front. So it is something that yeah, you can report. But I just told you, the way that they paid people is people individually negotiated for their salaries. When you have people individually negotiating for their salaries, you're going to get pay disparities, not just between men and women, 
but also between men and other men and women and other women. You want to know why? Because people are individuals and they're all going to have a different number, a different standard. And it's just par for the course when you negotiate your own salary. So th this is a non-story. Oh my God, people negotiated different salaries. Then when people learned, hey, the men are getting paid, some of the women are getting paid less than the men, they immediately fixed it and said, no, you're right, we're going to fix that. If anything, this, this, the, the whole point of the story should be the opposite. Bernie Sanders and his team believe deeply in pay uh, equality with men and women. That's what the article should have been. <laughs> you know what? I know that I've been screaming and yelling about this, but I just need to be clear about something. This is going to help Bernie. I, I really think it's going to help Bernie. Because they overreach so much. What you're doing is, you are now forcing people who are on the fence... And by the way, not many people are on the fence about Bernie. He's overwhelmingly liked. Only like 8% of Democrats dislike him. And he's got the highest favorability rating in the country of any politician. But what you're doing is you're forcing people in the, in the country to pick a side. Are you going to be with the people who despise Bernie Sanders and write hacky smear articles like this? Or are you going to do the right thing and defend somebody on principle and say, listen, man, what are you doing? What are you doing? The whole point of the article is implying he's a sexist monster and that there was sexual harassment going on there, and also uh, pointing out uh, pay disparity. Well, the pay disparity, to the extent there was any, was immediately taken care of, and there's pay equity. And the allegations, they even admit, oh, there's no evidence Bernie even knew about it, so why the fuck are you writing the article? And remember, the, in the title it was, uh, this could hinder 2020. Ugh. Okay. Keep going, and we're going to keep rebutting you because it's fucking easy, man. You guys, like, there are times when you're prepping uh, stories and you got to read through the articles and you're like, okay, this is a nuanced thing here, so I got to be clear. I got to, you know, hedge on this point and I got to be clear in this area. This article was a joke. I mean, this is like somebody needs to go back to how to do Propaganda 101 because... It is just, this is some Bush League shit. This is so amateurish. And, but again, they're going to make it so that it helps Bernie Sanders. And he hasn't even announced yet. And they're already doing this. Imagine what they're going to do when he announces. By the way, hear me now, quote me later. You'll see him soon enough. Wait for the Russia stories regarding Bernie Sanders. Oh, you think because Bernie uh, uttered some phrases about how, you know, oh, Russia attacked our democracy and all that stuff. You think that those, those things that Bernie said are going to earn him a pass on them smearing him over the issue of Russia? Pfft, you don't know anything about politics. Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders and his supporters are going to be smeared somehow and linked to Russia and Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin. I guarantee it. So wait for it, and then you can come back and tell me I was right yet again.